I made an app that can create other power apps and the best part is it's completely freaking real. That's right, the app that you're looking at on this screen actually generates code to make other power apps and the best part is I can copy and paste it into the power apps editor and it just spits the components out. It's like the most amazing thing ever. But in order to truly appreciate how this thing works, we need to back up for a minute and I need to teach you about this new feature called YAML in Power Apps. So let's take a look at it. I'm gonna go to a new screen over here, right? Completely new screen. And on it, I'm gonna place a button. And what I'm gonna do with this button is I'm gonna add some custom text. I'm gonna call this a submit button. And I'm going to, going to give it a color. Let's find it. There we go. Now I've got this green button. Wonderful, okay? Now, all of the code, all of the properties for this button are, are trapped inside the formula bar up here, right? And if we copy and paste this into, say, a notepad, what are we gonna see? We're gonna see nothing, right? Because there's no code there. But if I click on these three dots here, you can see this new feature, it's called view code. Holy moly, everything that was trapped up in that formula bar up there and there in the top left, I can see those properties right here. And the cool thing is I can copy and paste them into VS Code. Cool, right? New text file, boom. Let's change it to YAML, boom. Very nice formatting there. Great, 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 okay? And I can even change some of the things about this code that's instead of say submit, that say save. And I'm gonna copy this text right here and I'm gonna paste it back into the Power App. I'm gonna paste it as code. And now I've got a save button. Holy cow, YAML, right? Okay, so that got me thinking. That got me thinking. What can I do with this? Well, if we can create code in VS Code, and we can just paste it into the app right here, well, that means that I must be able to paste it into Notepad as well, right? That's, that's, it's just text. And we can create text in Power Apps that, that does the same thing. I could write some text in Power Apps and I could copy it onto this screen and it would generate a control, okay? And so that's what I did. I created this thing called an input generator. <laughs> It's kind of a kind of a strange name, but but what does it do? Right? When I create forms in Power Apps, I want to create the title for the form, which is one control. I want to create the input field, which is like a text input, or a drop down or a number input, which is the with the next thing. I want to create an error message. I want to put them all inside of individual uh, containers. So that's what I did. Let's see how this works. So here you start by typing in the screen name because I want these controls to be generated with a standard naming convention. So here I'm giving the screen name, we'll call it employee details. And for the field name, we're gonna put full name and we'll choose the input type text and boom, there's the YAML code. Okay, now here's the cool part. I'm gonna hit copy and I'm gonna to go to a different screen here in Power Apps. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste that stuff on in here. And there you go, look, I have got some brand new controls right there. I have got a full name, title, right? I've got a value, I've got an error message. This is, this is awesome, this is great, absolutely perfect, okay? What else can I do? Well, what if I wanna make that a, a date field instead? I can do this too. I can say higher date. And oh, look at that, I've got uh, Tiggy here. He came here to visit me. He just kind of broke into the room. Okay, Kitty's here too. So let's hit copy. No, nope, don't kiss the microphone. Don't kiss the microphone. That makes bad noises. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's paste that in there as well. Okay, so I'm pasting it. And look at that. Now, now I've got a date picker instead with, with a different title right? Higher date. This, this is amazing. But we can take this a step further, further because if I can create groups of controls in a container, I can create 
a whole form. And you might say, why the heck do you want to do that, right? Why do you want to create a form when you can just go inside here and automatically generate a form inside of Power Apps? I don't always like to do that because it doesn't give me the amount of control that I need, right? I want to create something that's called a patch form. Instead, I want to be able to completely customize things. And when you use the out of the box control and power apps, you have to live with what they give you. And I want things my way, okay? So let's take a look at this, this next part right here. And this is, this is really where we take it to the next level. Actually, hold up for just a second because I wanna show you just a little bit more about how all of this is getting generated. So here inside of this text field, I've got a super huge, uh, like long block of code right here. But the important part is, is it says, if you have selected this, this option for text, then go ahead and create a text field and create a text input field and an error message. But these are functions, right? And, Cause I've also got number, number input field, date input field, checkbox. Where's all that stored? Let's go take a look at the app property here. They are here in my formulas. Okay, these are global name formulas in Power Apps. The great thing about them is you can input parameters, like arguments, and it'll spit out some, some code for you, spit out the result, just like in Excel and just like a Power Apps formula. So if I want to create a text field, what I do is I type FX text input field and I put in the name of the field and it spits out this code right here. And this is the code that I paste into Power Apps, it's YAML. But I've got all the other things in here too, right? Because I've got the number input field, um, I've got my, my date, I've got my checkbox, and then I've got the supporting ones, right? Like the error message field and, and the title as well. Okay, cool, so that's, that's kind of how it works. Let's go to the form generator. This, this thing takes it to the next level. This is one step up, okay? So this is actually gonna generate an entire form for me. I need an example, okay? This is gonna be a onboarding form. So I'm gonna call it employee onboarding. That's a screen name. And now instead of inputting these fields one by one by one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target a Dataverse table and it's gonna automatically create this form for me. There's a little flow set up in the background, I'll show it to you in a minute. But when I click auto-generate, auto-generate, that sounds magical, right? There's, there's no co-pilot involved here. This is all just completely me coding stuff. Here we can see the input fields for the form, complete with all their misspellings. <laughs> Are, are part of this YAML code now. So we've got uh, some date time fields, some names, some, some vehicle makes and models and, and years. So um, this was obviously a table that is full of information about cars. <laughs> and when I copy this, this YAML code, look at this, this is, this is gonna be magic. Create a new screen here. Copy it in. Oh man, like that, that, that is a form. <laughs> and look, it came in with all of the naming conventions too that I, that I like to use. Like this is, this is just absolutely perfect. Okay, and you're probably thinking this can't actually be a real form, right? It doesn't actually submit, but you'd be wrong. You'd be 100% wrong. <laughs> There is, there's one thing I did before I started up recording and I put the data source in here, inspection CPPS, that's the name of the table. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and submit this form. I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in. Uh, let's just create some fake, fake information here. Uh, name is Matthew Devaney. Um, the vehicle make, uh, it's probably a Honda. That's the manufacturer. It's a CRV, the vehicle year 50. That doesn't make sense. Maybe it's a, it's a 2013. And I'm gonna hit this submit button, but when I do that, look, like the, the form that I created, it included a submit button with the patch code all written out. I got the field names right here. When I press this submit button, it's actually gonna work. And I'm gonna show you and prove to you that it works. And this is just exciting. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's, let's press play. 
and hit submit, form was submitted successfully. Whoa, this is, this is powerful, right? This is completely freaking awesome. Um, and I'm gonna go to edit data right here. And we are gonna sort this by the modified date and looks like it's already sorted that way. And here you can see the information that I put in is actually saving to this, this table. I mean, that's, that's, that's astounding. That's, that's awesome. And it seems like magic, my gosh. So this is really cool. And the reason I wanted to share this with you is because I think that this is the true power of using YAML and Power Apps. The true power, okay? It's not that you can copy things out into VS Code and change them, you can. It's not that you can go and save this code into a Git repo and, and use source control and just copy and paste snippets out of there. Uh, that's cool too. But the really cool thing is that you can make a code generator in Power Apps that builds Power Apps for you, does it in a standardized way, and does it the same way absolutely every time.